Mary Mary Kumpuche. Welcome back. Today we are going through my um, childhood, my upbringing. Not entirely, but somewhat. A lot of you have been leaving comments wondering, am I in Sweden? Do I speak Swedish? Wait, you're Swedish? Wait, you're Chilean? Wait, where are you from? So I thought we'll, um, will, I'll uh, do a little blog post sort of explaining my roots and uh, where I'm from and how I ended up where I am and things like that. As you probably already know, I was born in Temuco. If you don't know, then I'm going to link the 10 facts about me that I posted this month, I think it was this month. I'm gonna uh, link it up there so that you can check up those 10 facts. So I was born in Temuco, which is in the southern region of Chile. Sorry, got a hair on my... There we go. <laughs> um, where was I? Chile. Was born there. It's sort of the, if I remember, I'm going to put a little map here so that you can see. Where I was born. A beautiful city um, surrounded by Araucaria tree trees, which are beautiful, sort of Urskog, which is prehistorical forest. Mountains. Chile is surrounded by mountains. I mean, it's just a long mountain chain the entire country. So constant mountains are just beautiful and something I have missed all my life. It's just somewhere in the back of your head. You just want mountains. But yeah, so um, Chile was in, uh, unfortunately, in a dictatorship when I was born and my father my mother became more politically active once we moved to Sweden, but my father was very politically active and he had persisted and wanted to stay, but then uh, in the 80s they were sort of, um, I don't know, they were sort of going after people in waves. So then uh, in the middle of the 80s it started up again and many people that he knew that had already uh, moved and fled from Chile were telling him that he needed to get out, that it was now or never. He had escaped with his life this far, it was important for him to um, get out, basically. So uh, my mom and my dad made the decision to uh, uh, seek for asylum in Sweden through the Geneva Convention um, because of his political activism, which meant that the entire family were uh, given um, sort of the not, not the branding, but sort of the, the approval of uh, uh, being political refugees and uh, being in danger. So we were allowed or given the uh, asylum to come to live to Sweden. And so a very cold and wet and dark October, about 33 years ago, we landed in Vekhoeflikplats, which is a small land. And... Uh, we uh, stayed in the southern region of Sweden, that's where I grew up, but um, I was two years old when we moved, so I don't remember, as in memories, I remember feelings, I remember scents um, and sort of images of places, but I can't, I can't go, oh, that image is from my grandmother's room or that is from the beach or things like that. I just, there are certain sort of corners and things like that that I remember and going back um, when we have visited there are certain sort of I've been able to complete that puzzle like oh that's the window I've been seeing and that's you know very interesting when you're that tiny my sister was four going on five so she really remembers a lot um, I think she had it the hardest and my brother he's always been very adaptable and he's also <laughs> bless him has always had a very bad memory so I mean he barely remembers what he did last week so he says that he doesn't remember anything from Chile but then again the same thing as uh, with me once we visit it's always sort of tastes and scents and sort of emotions that you react to certain things in certain ways and he feels that too but yeah and it's strange because I was two when we moved to um, Sweden yet I have had a longing for that mountain chain as I mentioned all my life it's just something I always want to see in the horizon um, which is interesting because I was just two but it just it leaves a permanent mark on your retina it's just you expect that mountain chain to be there 
yeah, so I grew up being being very politically active as my parents were as well. We went to marches and we demonstrated and we just kept on the fight um, for the dictatorship to end in Chile. And uh, yeah, so my entire existence has always been political. And I know certain people don't want to talk about politics and this channel isn't necessarily about politics per se. But I, as a person, am very political because my existence is political. Um, the fact that I was lucky enough to um, get asylum in Sweden and grow, grow up with my father being alive because there are a lot of kids uh, from, well grown-ups now, from my generation that unfortunately did not grow up with their parents because they were murdered, because they were tortured and disappeared and things like that. So I am very lucky that my parents made the decision when they made the decision made the decision and just got out um yeah um what else can i say grew up in sweden in the region of smallland um loving always loving the forests of smallland so i'm very happy that at least we um, grew up in a place where there's a lot of forest entire sweden has a lot of forests but um there are certain regions that are more agricultural landscapes where it's more plain. Um, whereas where I live, there's just a lot, a lot of forests. Um, and when I was a little girl, I actually said that it was just one entire forest, that Sweden was just one entire forest. Obviously it's not, but um, that's how I felt in my mind. It was just forest, 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 how, however far my eye, my eye could reach when we were sort of going on road trips. I just, I just saw a sea of forests. Yeah, so I grew up in Sweden, and uh, this is where I have lived ever since. I have been back to Chile a few times, but um, moving back is probably something that will never happen for me, because um, for better or worse, in my mannerism, in how I view the world, um, the society where I grew up has marked me enough to know that the liberties that I have in Sweden are not... Uh, unfortunately not equal to the liberties I would have in Chile and it would be very uh, strange for me to give up certain um, ideals that I have just because society over there works differently. However this year there has been a vote to get a new um, constitution because the old constitution someone put it very uh, very well on Instagram I can't remember who they were now um, if I do I will put them here but um, there was someone who put the comment that it's strange that Chile has been allowed to keep a constitution that was written with the narrow-mindedness of the uh, conquistadors and finished with the fascism of a dictator and that's where Chile has been for several years and uh, um, a very neoliberal um, fascist capitalist idea because yes there are different degrees of capitalism whether you like it or not that's not something i'm going to discuss here but there are different levels of capitalism and how you then embed that into um, the constitution may not, might not necessarily be a good thing for the development of a of a nation because it's just um, it makes it so that the only way for the country to move forward it has to be driven like a business in a sense and a country cannot be driven like a business um, you can have a business mind going into politics by all means have that but um, a country is very different from a business you can't have that same um, sort of view on the development of a country as on the development of uh, business because in businesses there are hierarchies which are okay in businesses there are people who own the company there are people who are you know the executives and make all the decisions and then there are the ground workers and the office workers and all of that and that's fine for a business but in a country yes you hopefully have people that you elect to um, sort of run the country but those elected are running the country for the people who elected them so it becomes very um, askew when the people running the country are suddenly 
ignoring the people who elected them and are sort of only thinking about their own power and their own wealth. And that's sort of the imbalance that has happened in Chile. Other countries as well, but as I am from Chile, that's, you know, what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so there's been a lot of inequality and uh, there are just a handful of families in Chile who own all the wealth and the rest of the country, the rest of the population in the country is just highly in death, debt, which means that people are basically earning what they earned in the 80s. Um, whereas the society, the spending of the society has risen in, um, in money. I mean, the, oh, I'm horrible with all of these terms, but yeah. So it's a very expensive country. So everyone uh, buys everything with credit and then they build up credit loans that they cannot pay back and they take out new loans to be able to buy food um, and to be able to pay rent and things like that and it's just escalated to us to such a high point that last year uh, people just no it just became one thing too much yeah everyone so the entire country just went on strike and it was amazing and really emotional and powerful to see um, because it was something that needed to happen it was something that should have happened several years ago but finally it did and they kept demonstrating for months months and months um, refusing to um, to give in basically and uh, amongst the demands was for the president uh, to um, renounce his position um, he refused he still refuses and people are still uh, demanding that he does but um, He's still there. Um, due to COVID, the nationwide demonstrations had to stop uh, out of safety, um, but people have been very uh, engaged um, on um, online through social media, which is nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, they were, uh, we were given at least the opportunity to, um, to vote for a new constitution because uh, people, as I said, they were just not leaving the streets. They were demanding it for months after months after months uh, and the vote was supposed to take place in April actually this year but it was postponed due to Covid so um, when Covid sort of wasn't going away they realised that we can't postpone it yet uh, yet another six months because people are going nuts with this like they, they won't stand for it and I doubt that we should would have I really doubt that we would um, so yeah, in October there were elections and uh, if you are Chilean abroad, if you have uh, uh, dual citizenships or you're Chilean uh, and you don't live in Chile, you could still uh, partake in the election. So that's why I travelled to Gothenburg because I needed to go to the consulate um, where they had arranged for us to, um, to go and cast our vote. And I did that and I mean with it wasn't really expected to um, to not pass uh, El Abrevo, the, the approval uh, for a new constitution. Um, it wasn't a surprise that it did pass, but uh, it was still a really emotional experience and it was just really nice to uh, wake up and realise that we are going to get a new constitution. Obviously that doesn't happen overnight, so there's a lot of work that has to take place now because now next year um, comes the elections for those who will be given the task to write the new constitution and uh, then there is actually presidential elections as well so uh, it's going to be uh, a year next year of very important elections for the people of Chile so uh, for me at least it's very important and something I'm very interested in and um, it's very powerful. Just um, hopefully this time it will be done right. And um, in that fight, it's also the fight for the Native Americans of Chile. Uh, the majority, uh, if I'm not mistaken, are uh, Mapuches, indigenous Mapuches from the southern region of Chile. Um, and uh, that's where I am part of as well, the Mapuches. And uh, yeah, we are hoping that we will be given a space to voice our 
um, worries and our demands for our basic human rights because as native people our story is the same around the world uh, it was you know genocide and kidnapping of our children putting them into uh, christian schools and taking them away from their parents and uh, uh, the denial of um, our language and to keep our cultures and uh, sort of festivals and uh, our land as well so uh, we want to be heard this time we want to be taken seriously and even though we understand that uh, Mapuches and Chileans if I'm going to make a separation um, has to um, coexist um, we still as Mapuches need uh, to be in control of the land and uh, that can only happen with uh, companies no longer you know um, foresting um, and uh, cutting down our trees and uh, um, you know cutting off our rivers and uh, denying us the access to uh, our lakes and waters and things like that so there's a lot that's going to have to um, be uh, resolved and it's heavy and I'm gonna leave it at that but um, yeah so there's a lot of things going on in Chile and a lot of things that uh, I am taking part of at, in a distance, but uh, we are many Chileans in Sweden. Many of us uh, were lucky enough to um, find a safe space uh, in Sweden. And um, uh, the Swedish people were actually hugely um, engaged in um, um, in Chile. It was, it's been, even as I grow up, it's been more beautiful to realize the extent of it. Um, because when you grow up in it in Sweden, when we were going to sort of rallies and uh, demonstrations and things like that, um, I was with my parents and other Chileans, so I didn't reflect that much on everyone who were there. Um, but now growing up, I have had discussions with sort of uh, friends' parents who've said like, "Oh, yeah, we used to travel to Stockholm and take care of the uh, and take part in the mass protests against the dictatorship in Chile," and you know we've spent quite a few evenings talking about you know politics and how uh, you know engaged the population in Sweden were for the liberty of uh, uh, of democracy uh, for the Chilean people and it's uh, yeah it's very I will always be grateful um, for that uh, not only because my family could come and live here but for the um, the consciousness of the population back in the 80s, uh, 70s and 80s, who just wouldn't stand for, for it. Being on the other side of the planet, um, they were just putting pressure on the Swedish government to uh, put sanctions against Chile. That's sort of what they felt that they could do. And, and Sweden did. Yeah, it's really powerful when that becomes part of your history, of your life, because it's something I always carry with me amongst other things it's um i will always be a political refugee that's you know i have that stamp that's part of my uh i don't know my identity it's for better or worse uh, i wouldn't wish anyone having go having to go through you know having to flee your country but um you know when that is what you have to do uh I at least feel I was lucky enough to end up in Sweden with my entire family and, uh, you know, be safe here. And, uh, yeah, it's not not saying that it hasn't been a struggle and that, you know, there aren't hurdles being, you know, new in a country. But that's, you know, for another vlog. This was just how I ended up in Sweden. That's what this was about. And uh, it's a strange mix. And if you haven't experienced it yourself, I suppose you can't really explain to someone how it feels but it's uh, always proud of being born in the Republic of Chile, always proud of being Mapuche, always proud of being Swedish because I am. Uh, this is the society where I grew up in and the times I have visited in Chile I am treated like a tourist because the way I act, my mannerism, the way I conduct myself without even thinking about it, it just signals to everyone in Chile that this person isn't from here. So, um, you know, However much I am Chilean, 
I am also Swedish and uh, I feel both. Well, all three because I feel Mapuche too. So um, it's interesting. You can't really explain that feeling to someone who who hasn't had the experience of uh, belonging to more than one nation. But uh, it's powerful. And I treasure those nations very highly. Those nationalities very highly. Not the easiest subject, but um, I'm going to end it there. Thank you if you've listened. And uh, any questions, because I think I was a bit sporadic. Um, I think. I'm going to see in the edit how well. Uh, I'm gonna cut it as well, so that in things I'm gonna... I felt like I was repeating myself a lot at a point, so I'm gonna have to edit it a bit. But um, thank you for taking the time to listen, and I will see you when I see you. Bye!